Well, everyone is different, but there are some herbs that I think are sending out the message that they should be used by the general public. And those are herbs that are growing everywhere. It, to me, the dandelion, which is ever present, is saying, use me lots, I'm everywhere, I'm right outside your door. So I would really like to help people rethink their opinion of weeds and see that many of the things that grow prolifically that come up in our gardens and right outside our homes, like purslane, for example, uh, stinging nettles, miner's lettuce, um, these are wonderful herbs for daily use and I love to include them in salad. But of course people don't need to take herbs that have strong antimicrobial effects unless they have a need for that. But I'd say a lot of the common weeds are great for daily use. Red clover blossoms might be another one. Well. I certainly see that there's a place for pharmaceutical drugs, although I haven't had to take them in several decades. But herbs nourish us. And I sometimes hear the argument from people that the herbs haven't been properly tested in a laboratory. But herbs have been used by millions of people for thousands of years. And to me, that is a lot more valid than a two-year rat or rabbit study. So um, the herbs nourish us. They transform minerals from the earth and provide us not only with activities such as anti-inflammatory activity or analgesic activity, but they actually give us vitamins, minerals, essential oils that in themselves are nourishing and have healing properties. Mm, increased male sex drive. Well, I would start with nourishing your relationship and better communication and more massage and affection. Um, and then food is really important. So eating more black colored foods, more nuts and seeds, which are full of zinc and vitamin E, which nourishes our reproductive energy. And rather than uh, taking a pill to enhance libido that might work within an hour, Herbs that can enhance libido might be used over a period of time to actually build sexual energy. So I think of herbs like ginseng, ginkgo biloba, epimedium. Um, these are all things that are tonics. Pine pollen is another one. But we also don't want to use herbs like a Band-Aid. We want to really look at the whole picture of nourishing the whole body. So remember that sexual energy is extra energy. So we deplete our sexual energy by overdoing junk food and eating too many saturated fats that clog our arteries and also, you know, not really prioritizing our relationships. So that is the most important. Well, according to the principles of Asian medicine, we can enhance our lifelong memory by taking good care of our kidneys. So again, we don't want to just use herbs uh, allopathically. We want to think about avoiding things that are damaging to our mental well-being. I think a lot of people wake up with food hangovers. Maybe they've been overeating refined carbohydrates or uh, cold fatty foods like ice cream before bed. And you wake up feeling like maybe you've been drinking and you really haven't been. We know that aluminum is a very soft metal that comes out in our food and that when they've done autopsies on people that have mental dysfunction like Parkinson's or Alzheimer's disease, they often have levels of aluminum in their body. We should also think about mercury dental fillings or even aluminum that gets into our bodies through silver fillings and um, just chemical pollution that we're exposed to that we breathe in the air. But think about eating more black colored foods for our memory, things like black sesame seeds, black chia seeds. I love chia seeds, I think they're extraordinary. They're high in omega-3 fatty acids. And rather than thinking we all need to eat fish oils, well, there are vegetable sources of omega-3s. Spirulina, which is a spiral-shaped microalgae, is great for brain alertness. Also, we need to use our brains. You know, use it or you lose it. If all you're doing is reading magazines and playing video games, you're not really exercising your brain. So, you know, use your hands. I'm a big believer in uh, doing crafts your whole life, knitting, crocheting, sketching, playing an instrument. This is really good for uh, enhancing neural transport in our bodies. Of course, one of the most popular herbs for mental alertness is ginkgo biloba, and, and that's a great one. But we don't want to think that an herb by itself is going to do it. We need to 
put intelligent things into our brains and utilize that. Well, also according to the principles of Asian medicine, depression is a liver-centered condition. And I don't think there's many people that go to a psychiatrist or a therapist and when they say, I'm depressed, are told, what are you doing for your liver? But that's really where we should start. So we're actually undermining the health of our livers by eating the wrong kinds of fats. I'm a big believer in um, using good quality fats, things like avocados, nuts and seeds, uh, extra virgin olive oil I would use for salad dressing and really forget about the canola and the soy and the corn oil. I would think more about coconut oil. But we can help um, depression by using more sour foods, drinking lemon and water, eating more berries. We could also um, use more greens. The liver loves it when we eat greens. Greens are so high in chlorophyll and chlorophyll brings oxygen into our bodies. And even though our brains only weigh about 2% of our total body weight, they require about 20% of the oxygen that we intake. So simply breathing more deeply or uh, exploring practices such as pranayama yoga or kundalini yoga can be very mentally enhancing. One of the most famous herbs for depression is St. John's wort, uh, Hypericum perfoliatum, but it's been found to work from mild to moderate depression. Um, but I also use herbs like lavender, and not only uh, taking lavender as a tea, but smelling lavender essential oil. Um, another one might be uh, kava kava. So it's always good to look at the individual and work with food, herbs, and attitude. Get outdoors in full spectrum light for about 20 minutes a day. We know that there's something called seasonal affectative disorder or, or SAD, uh, which uh, results from people going to work in the dark, coming home in the dark, sitting under fluorescent lights all day. So a little bit of full spectrum light, maybe even without sunglasses or contact lenses, can also really help let the light shine through. So St. John's Ward, it's interesting, it can enhance photosensitivity which might be a problem because you could get sunburned. But one of the reasons why St. John's wort works so well is it actually enhances our light receptivity. So we are so connected to nature. Migraine headaches, a good place to start is what's causing them. And there's many foods that have been implicated in migraine headaches. Again, uh, in Asian medicine, it's said that migraines are liver fire rising, that the liver can't process something. So the heat rises and causes inflammation and stagnation in the brain and pain. So um, I would say it's always good to look at what was going on in your life when this started. For many people, they might say that migraine started at puberty or maybe in their teen years. And that might be an indication that there could be a hormonal uh, factor going on. But rather than thinking we need to change our hormones, it may be that we need to help our liver better deal with the overload of hormones. So again, sour foods like lemon and water, more greens. So uh, food allergies can be huge. You know, it's interesting, the word migraine, I like to think of it as my grain. Don't take away my bread. <laughs> Very often we crave the, the foods that are the worst for us. And um, I'm, I'm partly French Canadian. And it's interesting that the word um, for bread is le pain, which is spelled P-A-I-N, like pain. And I've seen people go off gluten and have release from their migraine headaches. I've seen people go off dairy, but it could be, you know, chocolate as much as I love it, could be a trigger, avocados, might be a trigger. So it might be very helpful for people to keep a food journal and see if there's any pattern and look at what did you eat the night before. I went to the airport with a friend a few weeks ago and he felt compelled that he needed to uh, have french fries at the airport and the next day he had a terrible migraine headache and you know, I was trying to be polite and not say, you know, I those french fries, they probably reheated that oil 
over and over and over again, which is going to give you all kinds of free radicals and trans fats. And, you know, you might want to see if that happens again. But, you know, cranial sacral work and making sure you have good posture. And herbs for migraines, there's many. Feverfew, butterbur, also known as pedicytes, um, lavender, uh, rosemary. These are all herbs that have been used by millions of people for thousands of years. High stress, well, you know, we don't want to say, take an herb and all your stress away. When your life is falling apart and you have financial ruin and uh, divorce is looming. Um, so what can we do for stress? Try to change the condition that's going on and find ways to cope with stress. So um, very often when we're stressed, we take worse care of ourselves. You know, people when they're stressed might use that as an excuse to drink more alcohol, eat more sugar, uh, you know, subsist off of coffee and no sleep or, uh, you know, start using drugs that they weren't using before. So I always am reminded that when we're stressed, we need to focus on what are the blessings in our life rather than only taking on the, the difficulties in our life. Um, so that, that's really important because we often over identify with the stressors. We want to get adequate sleep. I think I would be a crazy woman if I didn't have a bathtub and the ability to use essential oils in the bath. So one of the things I love to do for stress and has helped me get through very, very difficult times, even though I might be sobbing, is to soak in the bathtub with maybe seven to 10 drops of essential oil, like lavender oil. And then another little technique is um, stay in the tub while maybe you're sobbing and ah, um, and then stay in the tub and let the water out and visualize your stress going down the drain. I find that to be very, very powerful. Wearing the color blue can be helpful for stress. Um, there are herbs that can help you get through a stressful time. I think of kava kava, which is a native herb to uh, Polynesia. It's uh, anti-anxiety, it's mildly euphoric. I think of a valerian root, and even though valerian is often used as a sedative and to help people sleep, mind you, it doesn't work for everybody. Some people get more energized from valerian, but I found that in difficult times in life, using valerian actually helps me to get through the day and get my work done and have a smile on my face because I'm more relaxed as I face life's adversities. And we should also remember that in retrospect, very often the most difficult challenges in our life are also our greatest teachers. So even though we may go through great adversity, you may find in a few years that there was something important to learn from that that has helped you to be a better person.